Welcome to our weekly Forex forecast, and this is for trading for the week of March 30th to April the 3rd, 2020. Just a quick disclaimer here before we get started. This is for educational purposes only. Trading is a risky business, so please be careful with your money, especially right now when the markets are really volatile. All right, so as usual, we'll start off by taking a look at our calendar. Okay, so overall, in terms of um, what's going on in the market right now, we are seeing that um, the coronavirus, uh, the focus is now shifting to the US. Um, there was a lot of focus on, um, on Europe, and now we are seeing a lot more cases uh, that are coming forth in the US. So that's what we have on, the, um, on that front. And then um, last week here, we saw that US came out with a two trillion stimulus package for uh, to support everybody or the economy. And prior to that, Fed has said that they're basically going to do unlimited quantitative easing, which means they're going to put money into the market. They're going to buy securities in order to prop up the, the market basically support Wall Street and um, health market go up. Uh, so that's what we have overall. And in terms of uh, the news that we have coming up, actually prior to that, another thing that we have seen last week, um, as you all know, last few weeks, the markets have been swinging wildly. Um, so normally we see a 100 pip move um, and now we are seeing a 500 pips move a day um, or a thousand pips in a week, which we normally didn't even see in a month. Uh, so the volatility has gone through the roof um, currently. And um, last week we saw that everything has turned around. So US dollar cross has turned around. Uh, the equity markets went up um, over 20%. So they dropped 30% and went up 20%. And a lot of that has to do with one, there is all this uh, stimulus packages that the different governments are introducing as well as um, everybody cutting interest rates. Um, however, another thing that's kind of driving that is also um, the quarter end flows. So a lot of hedge funds and big um, institutional traders, they need to maintain a certain ratio of the different assets. So they need to have a certain amount of equity equities, bonds, and all of that. And now with the valuations changing, um, they need to basically readjust those ratios. So a lot of people uh, or a lot of uh, funds are now carrying more bonds as opposed to equity. So they need to move, uh, basically sell the bonds and move the money into equities. And that's what causing the equities to go up. And when equities go up, we see um, our risk currencies go up. So US dollar tends to drop um, and we see pretty much everything else go up against the US dollar. So that's what we have been seeing um, last week. And now we may see that uh, continue for the next uh, two, three days here as well. Uh, so quarter end flows and month end flows, all of them coming together. So it's every quarter that the big uh, traders have to basically um, readjust their portfolio. So every quarter end, we generally see this flow of money from one asset class to another. So that's really what's uh, driving the market. So that's one, one thing that's driving the market currently. So once they're done readjusting their portfolios, we may see another dip. But that's, um, but that's basically overall uh, what we have. In terms of the news um, coming up here, we have uh, business confidence numbers here. Also the consumer confidence numbers for uh, UK here. We're expecting that number to drop, of course, which is what we are seeing around the, um, around the globe, basically. All the indicators, everything is uh, really dropping right now. The expectations are down because of what's going on in the markets currently. So we are expecting this number to drop. Now, should it come in lower than expected, we could see British pound take a hit as a result of that. And also, actually, in Eurozone overall, um, we are seeing there are some uh, problems that are coming up. So right now, euro is going up, but we may see these problems become kind of come to the forefront uh, shortly. So basically, with so many countries being part of the Eurozone, um, now there is a problem with them all agreeing to different um, you know, different ways to basically support the different economies. And then some of the rich countries um, well, it's because there's a big divide. Some countries that are uh, that are rich, others are not. And because it is um, one, uh, 
um, our union. So that's why they need to sort of sort that out. And there's a lot of fighting, uh, infighting going on between the countries. So we'll see how that uh, plays out. If um, it escalates, then we could see a negative impact on the euro. So, so far, we're not really seeing that, but just keep that in mind as we go forward. So we also have business confidence numbers here for New Zealand. Previously, they were negative, so we may see another negative number here. But as China starts to open up, we may see um, the number actually get better uh, because if China opens up, that means they will be getting uh, products, importing products, both from New Zealand and Australia, which should have a positive impact on these economies. We also, also have manufacturing PMI numbers here for China. So this is supposed to, this number is supposed to go up as China opens up. Uh, so if the number goes up, that would be good for China, of course, but it will also be good for New Zealand and Australian dollar. And then let's see what else do we have. Um, Tuesday, we do have this current account um, balance number here. So it is um, supposed to get better. We'll see if that it does get better, then that'll be positive for pound here. And we have consumer confidence number here, which is as we can expect, uh, supposed to decrease for US here. But if these numbers are worse than expected, we are likely to see um, US dollar take a hit as a result of that. Uh, we also have monetary policy meeting minutes here for Australia. And at this point, not really um, expecting much of a change, but then we also saw that Bank of Canada basically did another emergency rate cut, and now the interest rate is sitting at 0 0.25, which is crazy low. Um, we haven't really seen that type of uh, number in long time, and as a result, we did say that Canadian dollar took a bit of a hit. So if we see that Australia cuts their interest rates further, or they say anything um, about putting more money, printing more money or supporting the economy, doing more quantitative easing, that could have a negative impact on Australian dollar. And then we have all sorts of PMI numbers here out of the Eurozone. So these numbers are, um, they right now they look like they're not that far off from the previous number, but I would actually expect these numbers to come in below expectations. And if they, if they do, then we could see Euro uh, being impacted negatively as a result of that. Now, because it's the beginning of the month, we also have uh, non-farm payrolls coming up. Generally, they are on Friday here, first Friday of the month. And prior to that, on the first Wednesday, we generally see this ADP non-farm employment change, which uh, basically ADP provides a lot of um, uh, what do we call payroll services to a lot of businesses in the US they're one of the largest companies and usually this number is an, an um, indication of how the non-farm payroll will come out so this tends to be a bit of a leading indicator we have seen numbers that have come in differently um, however generally we take this as a leading indicator for non-farm payrolls this number is expected to change drastically it was um, positive 130 183,000, but we are expecting a drop here. Um, now, that is expected as we are seeing that um, U.S. is sh or sh has shut down a lot of businesses, as have a lot of other countries. Now, if it comes in even worse than expected, then we are likely to see a negative impact here on the U.S. dollar, and also we could see uh, our equities um, have a negative impact as a result of this number. And then we have PMI numbers um, coming up here as well. They are expected to drop, but I think we could see uh, more of a drop here for PMI numbers. And again, if it is worse than expected, that will be negative here for the US dollar. And coming up on Thursday, we have unemployment claims. These are likely to go up. Um, we saw 3.2 million um, new claims that were filed 
previously. And I think this number is likely to go up because as the businesses are shutting down, we are seeing a lot of people are getting laid off, whether they're getting laid off for a short period of time or for a longer period of time as the businesses are not sure how, um, how the business will be, how the economy will be, and whether they will be able to um, Kind of employ all these people that they were employing when things were good so as a result we are seeing a lot of unemployment and so this number is likely to go up as a result of that and then we also have services pmi numbers here services pmi numbers tend to be a little bit more important uh, for eurozone um, because it is a service-based economy so these numbers are supposed to be much lower here than expected and again same thing if we see these numbers come in even worse than what the expectation is, then we're likely to have a negative impact here for the euro. And of course, on Friday, we have this non-farm payroll. Generally, it, um, it creates a lot of volatility in the market. This time here, we are likely to see instead of, uh, instead of a positive number here, we are going into negative territory. Uh, this is the first time we are going to see a negative number here. So all the numbers previously, as we can see, they have been coming positive. Uh, but this time here, we are seeing negative, our expectation is negative 81K. So we saw uh, last week when the unemployment numbers came out, uh, the expectations was about 1.8 million and we saw 3.2 million. Um, so there was a big gap in the, what the expectation was uh, compared to what the actual numbers came in at. So same thing here, if we see a bigger drop here, that would be negative for the US dollar. And of course, the average hourly earnings are likely to drop. I think they could drop even, even further here. So just keep an eye on that overall. Not looking good here. The unemployment rate may even be higher than 3.8 percent even though this um, this whole thing of layoffs and everything else the market's shutting down or the business is shutting down it's just starting but already because of the number of cases we are seeing in the u.s uh, right now the number of cases in the u.s is pretty much they are second in second place behind china so a lot of cases of virus uh, that are being seen in the US. So as a result of that, I think we can see a worse number here. And again, that is not good for the US dollar. And of course, we have PMI numbers. Again, I would expect this number to be worse than expected. So that's what we have in terms of our news. So let's move on to the charts here. All right, so it has been a very, very volatile uh, time, as we can see, huge moves to the downside, and now we have seen uh, a big move to the upside here. So for the euro here, we do have a bullish candle close here. Now, uh, do keep in mind that price is into resistance, and this is where, as we can see, um, the euro has struggled previously. So at this point, the candle looks really strong, so we could see this one go up further, especially with the with the big hedge funds and everybody else uh, or big traders, I should say, they are rebalancing their portfolios. As a result of that, we could see further buying um, in terms of equities. So we are likely to see these currencies go up against the US dollar. So here, next target would be 1.1250. And it could even go all the way into um, 1.15, but more likely we could see it go into 1.1400. So looking for a bullish move here. And then we could see something like this. As the pressure to buy the equities subsides, we're likely to see a drop. But during these two, three days, we could see a bigger move to the upside. So that's what we have to keep in mind. So bias is bullish. But like I said, we are right into this resistance level. So if price does not go through, we could see a drop here as well. So I would just suggest being cautious here, but bias is bullish for Euro dollar. Pound dollar here, this one has been a crazy move to the upside. We saw that price moved up. Let's see, how many pips do we have here? 
um, thousand pips. It's gone up thousand pips in one week. We do not, we normally don't even see such a move in a whole, um, whole month, uh, but it has gone up thousand pips in one week. So this is still looking bullish here. Again, we are into this resistance here, but I think this one could go further as well. So next target would be 1.2720. And should it go further, we have 1.3080. Uh, but at least I think we could see a bit of a move here, um, at least to test that. Uh, so again, I do expect these num these um, all these currencies to turn around as the pressure, the buying pressure from the um, hedge funds subsides. I think we'll see some, I think we'll see the equity markets come down. And when that happens, we'll likely see US dollar go up as well. But the Fed is also going to start their extensive quantitative easing program next month. So basically they have said they are going to print unlimited amounts of money in order to support the market. And that could lead US dollar to devalue over time. But I think in the short term, we may see um, all these currencies drop against the US dollar. But like I said, prior to that, I would look for a further push to the upside. 1.2720 is the first target. And of course this one, and then finally 1.3080 will be the next tar big target to the upside. So bullish bias for pound dollar as well. Aussie dollar here, this one, same thing. We have seen a big move to the upside here. So this one is still looking bullish, but I don't see this as, um, as bullish as we are seeing Euro and British pound. So this one, um, again, I would look for a further move to the upside. So we could see price just over the next two, three days here, we could just see price go up into 0 0.6450 and then move down from that as it comes into resistance. Or if, you know, the way things are moving, price moves a lot, then I would look for this type of move. So I would look for a price to go all the way into the, uh, into the resistance where this whole shortage of the US dollars started and now, um, and then basically come down from there. So bias is bullish for Aussie dollar as well. In terms of our targets, we are looking at 0 0.6450 and then 0 0.6650 as the second target. So right now bias is bullish for Aussie dollar as well. And then we have New Zealand dollar. Of course, this one went up just like others. So here, bias is bullish. And then I'm looking at 1.6200 as the next target. And we may see price turn around from there. So watch out for that. But just like the others, I think we could see this one go all the way um, into this place where it first started dropping from. So markets are volatile enough that uh, these, um, these currencies can move back all the way. But having said that, with the, once the rebalancing is done, we could also see sudden drops uh, as soon as the, the funds stop buying uh, the equities. So just keep in mind that it is going to be volatile going forward as well. And our normal rules of trading do not apply under these markets because prices are moving very erratically. And I would expect this to continue in the short term here. Dollar CAD here, same thing. We saw price drop. So bias here is bearish. Now with the Bank of Canada cutting interest rates um, again last week, Plus, um, Canadian dollar is also impacted by oil. So oil is at all times, um, all time low here at twenty dollars that we have not seen in a long, long time, and all of that is a result of um, the price war between Saudi Arabia and Russia. So U.S. has been trying to step in and negotiate between OPEC and Russia in over in order to basically support the price of oil. Uh, because now we are seeing that all the reserves are getting uh, getting almost to capacity now, and um, there have been calls uh, from refineries uh, to see that so they want the production of oil to actually decrease 
because the, um, all the reserves are filling up. Uh, and when that happens, basically we could see a further drop in the price of oil. So uh, US is trying to negotiate some sort of a deal so that they're not, Saudi Arabia and Russia are not fighting uh, over the production amounts and that's why the price is dropping. So basically when oil drops, Canadian dollar is likely to drop, which means dollar CAD will go up. So, so watch out for that. If we see a further drop in price of oil, we could see this one go up again. So that's something to keep in mind, but right now bias is bearish. First target would be 1.3770. And then second target here is 1.3650. So bias is bearish here for dollar CAD as well. And then we have Euro pound. And as we can see, the move that happened over lots of different week, weeks here happened just in two, three weeks. And now we are seeing that come back down here again. So with um, British pound moving up really fast, we are seeing Euro pound drop. So with this one, bias is still bearish, but as we can see prices again into support, so do watch out for that. But I think um, Euro overall is likely to, uh, to drop. So we could see a further move to the downside. First target is 0 0.8800. And then we have 0 0.8750 as the second target. So bias is bearish for Euro pound. Euro Swiss franc here, this one has gone up overall, still slowly making its way to the downside. Now over the last few, uh, few weeks here, price hasn't really moved much. So the candle close that we have is neutral here. In this case, we could see price go into the resistance and then drop back down basically i'm expecting this one to go sideways and stay within this range that it has been trading in for the last several weeks here so neutral bias for euro swiss franc pound swiss franc has gone up as um, british pound has turned around so with this one bias is bullish here next target would be 1.2100 and then we are likely to see a move towards 1.2250. So bullish bias here for pound Swiss franc. Dollar Swiss franc here, US dollar has not done so well last week. And as we can see a huge drop in dollar Swiss franc here. So now bias is still bearish here. And also once we see that the hedge funds stop buying, uh, all the stocks, then we are likely to see the stock market come down, which means our safe haven um, currencies are likely to go up as well. Uh, so we could see Swiss franc become strong, but I think US dollar, um, dollar Swiss could still come down here. So bearish bias here, target, first target is 0 0.9380. And then we have 0 0.9320. So bias is bearish here uh, for dollar Swiss franc. Pound yen, this one again has turned around a fair bit. The entire move here um, over the last week and a half got undone. So this one's looking bullish here as well. Next target is 137 and then 138. And this is where price comes into strong resistance. So this is where I would expect price to at least bounce back down a bit, even if it doesn't go all the way down, I would look for a bounce off of this level because this is a strong support resistance level. This is where price has, um, price has turned around or at least uh, it got impacted uh, pretty much every time it touched this level. So bias here is bullish um, and we could see price go up further before it drops. Euro yen here, this one is a neutral. For this one, we are seeing the price is just uh, trading in this range. So over the last several weeks here, 
price has just been stuck in this range. So bias here is neutral. This one could actually drop. So as long as price stays below 121, I think we could see price drop from here. And, and I will look basically for a range bound move here. So neutral bias for Euro Yen. Dollar Yen here, this one has turned around price went into the resistance level and now we have a big move to the downside here. We are into this res uh, support level here. So do watch out for that because we could get a bounce here. But overall, we are, um, we are looking a bearish here. So next target here is 106.50 and then 105. So bias is bearish here for dollar yen. Aussie yen here, this one has not been as strong as some of the other ones here because Australian dollars relatively is not as strong. So we do have a move to the upside here, but we are into resistance. So keep that in mind. Um, and then we have, um, um, but should it get through here, there is more room to the upside. So the first target level would be where the market dropped off from initially uh, when it had basically um, dropped initially. So it could go retest that level, 69.50. And if it gets through that, we could see it go all the way into 71.50. But this one, like I said, is not as bullish as pound yen, for example. Uh, so we could see price turn around. If it does not go through 67.50, we could see this one turn around. And then we have New Zealand yen. Again, this one has not been as um, strong again, but bias is um, bias is bullish here. But as we can see for the last three weeks here, price has not broken the resistance. So which means if it fails to break the resistance again, we could see price drop and basically become sideways here. So bias is bullish here, but again, with caution, just like um, Australian dollar, we could see price turn around here. So watch out for that. But otherwise, we are looking, should it go through here, then next target would be where price dropped from initially, which is 66.50 and potentially into 68. Uh, so bias is bullish for now for New Zealand yen. CAD yen here, Canadian dollar, like I said, has not been very strong. Uh, one, because Bank of Canada has been cutting rates. And secondly, or more importantly, I should say, because of the price of oil, with oil tanking, Canadian dollar has taken a big hit because Canada is a big expor exporter of oil and it is feeling that impact. Now, the candle for this week is neutral. It's completely indecision candle here. So we could see this one go in either direction. I will look for a retest uh, potentially of this level here. So if it doesn't go through, I would look for a move to the downside here. Uh, so bias here is neutral for now for CAD yen. But like I said, if it holds below 78.50, then we could get another move to the downside. So watch out for that. Now, should the price of oil start going up because uh, you know, if they come to an agreement of some sort in terms of production, and then we are going to see Canadian dollar turn around and that could happen pretty rapidly. So do keep an eye on price of oil if you're trading Canadian dollar. All right, so next one is pound New Zealand here. So at this point, we see that price has been trading in a range here as well. As we can see, price went all the way into the high and then it has dropped. So now this one is looking bullish here, but we are into resistance. So right now, my bias is neutral here because as long as this holds below this 2.0740 level, I would look for a drop. But once it goes through this level, then it becomes bullish and we could see price go uh, further up even. Um, and then we'll have these uh, targets to the upside. So anything above this level would be bullish, but for now bias is neutral. First, uh, my base case scenario would be looking for price to come back into the range. So neutral bias here for 
uh, for pound New Zealand. Actually, uh, we usually don't do this. Okay, so let's move on to our commodities here. And before that, there were a couple of questions. Um, so question is, will US dollar strengthen in the upcoming week? I think we'll likely see US dollar draw, we could see US dollar drop further before it strengthens because the hedge funds will be rebalancing their portfolios till March 31st. And then we could see some reversal in here. And um, in terms of liquidity, we are all over the place. It is very, very volatile and I do expect it to continue. Um, this sort of volatile move. I don't think we're getting away from volatility anytime soon. So I would expect it to basically continue to be volatile like it is right now. So here, um, for silver here, we are seeing that price has not been able to basically go anywhere outside of this range for the last three weeks, sorry, last three days. So at this point, we have seen a uh, move back up in silver as well. So as um, generally we see that silver and gold are usually safe haven assets, but during this time, we are seeing that they are moving basically in the same direction as the stock market is moving uh, because the market has dropped so suddenly that um, in order to maintain their margin levels and everything, the big funds um, and big traders have had to sell everything, all their assets, including gold and silver. That's why we have not seen gold and silver uh, be, you know, do too well. And the question here is what is rebalancing? Uh, basically, like I explained before, um, what hedge funds have to do every quarter end is that they have to maintain a certain ratio of assets. So they need to have a certain amount of money um, into bonds. Uh, so more of the safe, um, safer sort of uh, assets as well. In, um, sorry. Um, instead of equities. So certain number have to be in equities and certain number has to be in bonds. So what we are seeing right now is bonds are going up, equities have been going down. So they have to sell the bonds and buy equities, which has caused the stock market to go back up. So once they are done rebalancing, they are likely to stop buying equities and stop selling bonds. Then we are going to see the stock market turn around, which means our US dollar is likely to turn around during that time as well. Um, so for now, the, here, for silver, we are into resistance here. So this one will be interesting. So if price does not break through this resistance level in the next couple of days here, then chances are we are likely to see this one come back down um, instead of going up. But um, as, the, um, as the funds are rebalancing their portfolios, should it go through this resistance then, very likely that it will go all the way into 15.30 level here. So for now, this is a bullish, but I would just be careful with this one because it could turn around just from 14.70 level here and just go down instead of going all the way up. So that's something to watch out for. If on the daily, we do not see a break of the high, then very likely we are seeing or we are looking for a move to the downside. And then we have gold here. As we can see for the last few days, gold has been stuck in a range as well. So in terms of our weekly candle here, we do have a bullish candle close. Uh, price has gone all the way almost to the top here, but now price has been stuck sideways here for the last few days. And same thing that we talked about silver here, we could see price turn around here. So if in the next couple of days till March 31st, if this one does not break the high here, chances are it is likely to come back down. But for now, we could see another couple of days of move higher, which means it could go all the way into 1690. So if it breaks through the high, then I will look for the next target. But if it doesn't break the high, then chances are we're coming back into 1575. So right now it is bullish, but with caution. 
oil here, oil has dropped, but it hasn't really broken the low here. So this week's candle close is actually neutral. And when we start to see neutral candles here, generally that means we um, may be coming into a turning point. So at this point, what I'm looking for here is price does not break the low here then we are going to see a move to the upside. So watch out for that. Now, oil has dropped a lot. So I would not expect it to drop too much more because at $20, there's, I don't know how much lower this can go, um, but right now what I'm looking for basically is a potential turnaround in oil. Um, I will look for price to go retest the low if it doesn't then we're likely to see a move higher. So next target here is 28 and then 31.80. So bias right now is neutral for oil. Now, should it broke, break through the low here, then we could see price drop a bit more, but I think we are into these prices that are, it shouldn't go lower then. But then again, markets are crazy right now. Okay, so with copper here, Similar to oil, we have seen price turn around, but then hasn't really been able to hold on to that bullish move here. So candle close that we have here uh, for copper is also neutral. We have an indecision candle, same thing. What I'm looking for here is as long as price holds above the low, we could see it go back up. But if it doesn't go through the resistance, then again, we are likely to see another move to the downside. So for now, I'm going to watch these two levels here, 2.20 and then 1.98. So I'm expecting price to uh, basically be between these levels here. So sideways move is what I'm expecting for copper. Bitcoin here, I do not actually have the weekend numbers. Um, so please check into that. But based on the Friday close here, we are, this one's looking bullish, but it's into a strong resistance level here. So we could see it turn around from here, but should it go through, because it is looking bullish right now, I would look for another move to the upside, potentially into there. So right now bias is bullish for Bitcoin and the next target would be 82.70. And then we have S&P 500. So we saw that price has been going up over the last few days here. And then on Friday, it actually closed to the downside. So in our weekly candle, as we can see prices into resistance here, it did do a big move to the upside. So here, what I'm looking for is a retest of the high. If it holds below 2650, chances are we are going back down again. Um, so that's something to watch out for. So right now I'm neutral on S&P 500, not really looking for more of an explosive move to the upside at this point. I think, um, I think equities will likely draw further before they really bottom out and we start seeing any kind of sustainable move to the upside. So right now bias is neutral. Basically, like I said, I'm looking at the resistance. That will be the main indicator of what, uh, what the equities may do. Uh, but having said that, because we still have a couple more days where um, the, uh, sorry, where the portfolios are being rebalanced, we could see a move into uh, 2,800. So that's a level that I would keep an eye on, but for now, but if it gets stuck below 2650, then I'm gonna be looking for this one to drop. So neutral bias for S&P 500. NASDAQ, same thing here. We saw that price came into this resistance level and Friday actually had, we had a bearish close for this. So similarly here as well, if price does not go through the resistance here, this will be an important criteria here. If it does not go through the resistance, then chances are it will come back down and we could see price basically draw further here. But because like I said, same thing as S&P 500, because there, is, there are still a couple of days where the, uh, where the portfolios are being 
rebalance, we could see another move to the upside into 8,300. So I'm not looking for stock market to go all the way to the upside. We may see a short move to the upside before it drops again. So it is important to watch out this 7,900 level. But if it holds below, then it is likely to drop here. And then same thing here we have seen uh, for Dow Jones on Friday, price actually dropped instead of going back up. So this one has had a big move to the upside, but same thing here, price did bounce off of the resistance level. So right now, again, neutral here, but I will, um, I will keep my eyes open um, for another little move to the upside into 23,480 because if it does go through the high, we could see it uh, come into this 23,000 about 500 level. So keep an eye on that. Bias is neutral though. And then DAX here, this is looking about the same here, but the DAX hasn't gone through the resistance in the last three days. So this one is actually, we could see this one drop first before the other ones drop. Um, but right now, bias is still neutral here. I am looking for price to essentially go back. Oops, my apologies here. There we go. Okay, so again, we could see another move to the upside, but this one hasn't broken the resistance in three days. So chances are that this may not. So we could see a move basically to the downside here, uh, first into this 2900 level and then into 2460 level. Uh, so bias is neutral for this one as well. And then FTSE, as we can see in the last three days, it hasn't broken the resistance. So this is looking similar to our DAX. So if we look at the weekly here, we see that price did go into 58.80, but then it held below. And the candle that we have is looking very neutral at this point. Same thing, I'm going to keep an eye on the resistance because we could get another push here to the upside. But if it holds below 58.80, I'm looking for the drop back um, into these lower levels then. So neutral bias here for FTSE as well. And as we can see here for Nikkei here, for the last four days, price has not broken this resistance. It did go through once, uh, but then it has basically closed below 19,450 uh, level for the last four days. So this one is looking uh, like this is likely to move lower as well. So looking at the weekly here, we see uh, we see a bounce off of this resistance level. So same thing here, what I'm going to keep an eye on would be 19,450 level here if it holds below. So I would look for a retest here in the next couple of days, but if it closes below this level on the daily, then over the, the rest of the week, I will look for a drop here. So neutral bias for Nikkei as well. All right, so before we wrap it up here, I do have a special announcement to make actually. So with everything that has been going on, um, I do want to offer some support here. So if anybody is looking to learn Forex trading, um, I am offering a big discount off of the regular price of my course in order to support everyone. So basically I'm offering a 60% off discount. The Learn to Trade Forex course, which is regular price is $497. Only now during this time that we are going through this pandemic, you can buy it for $197. So after that, the price will go back to normal here. So in the Learn to Trade Forex course, what do you get? Basically, we have eight modules plus um, a lot of bonus videos um, that are part of uh, that are part of this course. You, we start from the very beginning, introduction to forex. We talk about support and resistance, and then trending markets, reversals, and then we look at top-down analysis, different trade setups, um, equity and risk management, and all of that. So. Um, you basically start from the from the basics and move into more of the intermediate um, level. And then in the bonus material, we have more of the advanced topics that are covered. 
in order to get this, you do need a coupon code because like I said, regular price is $497. I'm offering $297 off, so it's only $197. Um, dollars. So when you go to this link, tradingwithvenus.com forward slash Forex, you do need to put this code in in order to get the discount because like I said, normal price is still um, $4.97. Um, and the question is, is this, do you get lifetime access? Yes, you do get lifetime access. And actually another thing is I'm updating this course. So anybody who signs up now will get the updated course as well. Um, so it's, it's been a little bit of time that um, I have done this. So now we are going to, so how's the math off? Is the math off 300 for 500? It shouldn't be. Well, he is slightly off. So um, that's okay. Just $300 off, basically, I should have said. Um, not $297. Let me change that. We are correct. Math is a little off here. So you get $197. But either way, you're only paying three only paying $197, not $497. Uh, so the code is we got this, is the coupon code. All right, so with that, I will wrap it up here. Um, like I said, expect volatility in the market. So please be careful um, as you are trading because like I said, market can be crazy right now and I expect volatility to continue for some time now. So good luck with your trading this week and I will see you on Monday. Uh, generally, you can get my daily market analysis um, on the YouTube channel. And if you just do a search for Trading with Venus, you will find my YouTube channel there. Right, you're welcome. So I'll see you next time. Bye for now.